What's going on everybody, Josh here with Scrapyard Films and today I got another tutorial for you. In this one, I'm gonna be showing you how to get the absolute best recording settings using OBS, Stream Elements OBS, and Stream Labs OBS. These settings I'm gonna be showing you are the most compatible for putting into a video editor, which most people do when they record OBS stuff is they edit their video right afterwards. So instead of not knowing and recording in something kind of incompatible or where the audio is off, these settings will provide you the most stable and high quality footage. Now in this video, I'll be showing you the best settings using your X264 or your processor to encode your video. If you wanna learn the best recording settings using the NVIDIA encoder or the AMD encoder, check the links in the description because I will put those there. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. first thing you want to do is make sure you update OBS. You got to have at least version 24 for this to work. Now you can download the updated OBS on their website, or if you want to use stream elements like I do, you can download that in the description below. So once you're fully updated and good to go, let's get started. Go ahead and find your settings button and click that. This menu will look a little bit different if you're using Streamlabs, but all these options will still be here. First thing we want to do is make our way down to the video tab or video section in Streamlabs. Once you click that, we're going to see four options. Base canvas resolution, we're going to want to make sure that's the exact same resolution as our monitor. So if we have a 1080p monitor, go ahead and make sure your base canvas is 1920 by 1080 Output scaled resolution, we are not going to scale, so make sure that is also the same as your monitor. Downscale filter does not matter since we are not downscaling, so we can keep that up to bilinear just to make sure we're not using any extra CPU we don't want to use. Next, go down, you're gonna see common FPS values. You can click the drop down to see some other options, but we're not gonna use those. We're just gonna stick with common FPS values. Once you've done that, you can click the number and you're gonna see some drop down. We wanna make sure that is 60. That's gonna provide the most fluid looking footage when you record. Go ahead and hit apply. Next, find your output tab and go over to the recording tab. Make sure your output mode is set to advanced. Normally it's on simple. So if it is, drop it down to advanced so we can see all the options. We're gonna keep type standard and then choose your recording path. You can adjust this as needed. Hit browse and choose where you want your outputs to go. Go down to recording format, and by default, it's usually gonna be on FLV, but we're gonna choose MP4. We see a few other options down here like MOV, MKV, and we're not gonna use any of those. We're only gonna use MP4 because MP4 is the most compatible. If you choose MKV, it's gonna to wanna to make you reconvert it to an MP4, and so why even do that? You might as well just do MP4 because that's gonna be the most lossless for you. So let's choose MP4. Encoder, since we are gonna be using our processor, let's go ahead and make sure X264 is checked. Rescale output, we do not wanna do this because if you do wanna rescale this down, you wanna do that in your video editor. So keep that unchecked. We don't need anything under custom mux or settings because we're using MP4 and not MKV. Rate control, we go down here, we're gonna see some options, CBR, ABR, VBR, and CRF. CBR is constant bit rate, then we have average bit rate, variable bit rate, and then we have CRF, which is constant rate factor. We're gonna choose CRF. This is a little bit different than choosing an actual bitrate number because this is actually a quality scale from 1 to 52. And the range you want to go in, depending on your computer or processor, is anywhere from 15 to 23. So if you have a really good processor, I recommend doing 15. Anything above that is going to be a much bigger file size and you're not going to see any difference in the quality. If you go down to 23, you're going to see a maybe a little bit reduction in the quality, but your file size is going to be dramatically low. You know, you could record like a 30 minute screen recording and it'll be like 100 megabytes. So it's your call. I would say play around with these, see which one you like best. But I personally use 15 every time I record. And this is the quality you're seeing right now on this tutorial. This is 15 CRF right here. So if you like this quality, that's what the setting is. Keyframe interval, by default, that's on zero, but we're gonna change that to one. Because when you keep it to one, that records in more fluid high frame rate. If you bring it down to two, you'll see a little bit of blockiness when quick movements happen. So I like keep in mind at one. Then we go down to CPU used in preset. If you select this, you're gonna see some words right here. And basically you're gonna choose this based on how good your processor is. The first two options right here are gonna be using less CPU power. So for older processors, maybe like computers that are over three years old, you'd wanna use these first two options. If you have a computer that's within three years old, then you could choose very fast or faster. And if you have a really good processor, like a nice Ryzen 3000 series, then you could choose faster medium. But anything below medium, you're not gonna see any difference in quality but it's gonna use way more CPU power, which you'd notice down here once you start recording. So I recommend never going past medium. I usually keep mine around faster, faster, and it looks great. So I'm gonna choose faster. Profile, these you won't really tell a difference in quality, but the common two ones that people choose are main and high. 
Main is for a little bit older processors. High is for newer processors. So I like choosing high. Tune, keep this to none. And the next 264 options, leave it blank. Once you do that, hit apply, and then go ahead and record something and see how it looks. But while you're recording, look down here at the CPU usage preset and make sure that thing's not going way too high. Because if that thing gets above 50 or 60 or something along those lines, you're going to start dropping frames and your video will look pretty terrible. So if you are dropping frames or this CPU number is too high, then go ahead and drop the CRF number to maybe like 20 or kind of just go from there. This is going to be different for everybody's computer, so you may have to play around with this number. But once you find your sweet spot and looks good to you, you're all done. And there you have it, the absolute best recording settings for the most compatible video for using OBS, Stream Elements, or Stream Labs that you can throw in a video editor and edit with no problems at all. I hope this video helped you out, and if it did, be sure to shoot a like down there, maybe subscribe, because that'll really help me out. I'm trying to hit my new goal of 20,000 subscribers, and I can do that with your help. So thanks again for watching, everybody, and I'll see you all in the next video. And I want to give a shout out to all my supporters, especially my super scrappers, LMC, HPL Gamers, and Old Man Beta.